Today, I'm diving into an important topic, understanding the differences between invasive breast cancer and ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS. If you've ever been confused about what these terms mean and why treatments differ, stick around because I'm going to break it all down. Hi, my name is Tasha Gandhi here to help you answer all questions surrounding breast cancer and health. First, let's talk about DCIS. This stands for ductal carcinoma in situ, or in situ, depending on how you pronounce it. Essentially, this means that the cancer cells are still inside the milk ducts. They haven't broken out into the surrounding breast tissue. Think of it as a cancer that's in place. It hasn't spread. DCIS is often caught early, usually through a mammogram, and it's considered non-invasive. Sometimes people also call it precancerous. So while it's technically cancer, it hasn't spread or invaded nearby tissue, nor does it have the propensity to do so. However, if left untreated, it can potentially turn into invasive cancer, which is why treatment is still important. Now let's move on to invasive breast cancer, which is a little bit different. The two most common types are invasive ductal carcinoma, or IDC, and invasive lobular carcinoma, or ILC. In invasive ductal carcinoma, the cancer starts in the ducts, but then breaks through the walls and spreads into the surrounding breast tissue. Invasive lobular cancer, on the other hand, begins in the milk-producing glands or lobules and then spreads. These cancers can also spread to other parts of the body, which is why they're called invasive. So the biggest difference between DCIS and invasive breast cancer is that DCIS stays in place while invasive cancers spread beyond where they started. And because of this difference, the treatment for DCIS and invasive cancers is also different. For DCIS, the goal is to get rid of those abnormal cells before they turn into something more dangerous, more invasive. And most commonly, this means surgery. You'll often hear about two types, a lumpectomy, breast conservation surgery, where only the affected area is removed, or a mastectomy, which is where the entire breast is removed, especially if DCIS is over a large area. After a lumpectomy, radiation therapy is usually recommended to minimize risk of recurrence within that breast. And if the DCIS is hormone sensitive, doctors might prescribe hormone therapy to prevent it from coming back, particularly if you've had a lumpectomy. This, however, is an individualized decision and it is something you will need to talk about with your oncologist. Now, here is something a lot of people ask. Why don't we use chemotherapy for DCIS? Well, because DCIS is localized and hasn't spread. There is no need to use chemotherapy, which is a treatment that affects the whole body. On the other hand, for invasive breast cancer, we have to treat both the cancer and any possible spread. So the treatment plan is usually more extensive. Like DCIS, surgery can either be a lumpectomy or a mastectomy. But with invasive cancers, doctors often check the nearby lymph nodes to see if the cancer has spread, also known as a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And if it has, that's when things like chemotherapy or targeted therapies come into play. Chemotherapy is used because it can treat cancer cells throughout the entire body. And there is also radiotherapy to lower the chance of cancer coming back in the breast. And for hormone positive cancers, endocrine or anti-hormone tablet treatment is also recommended. DCIS is non-invasive and stays within the ducts, while invasive cancers like IDC and ILC can spread to other tissues and potentially beyond. This is why DCIS treatment is focused on the breast with surgery and radiation, while invasive cancer treatment can include chemotherapy, other systemic therapies to target any spread. And if you want to learn more about chemotherapy, I will link a video for you to check out as well. 